Okay, welcome to the uh, video about on AP Microeconomics regarding price controls, meaning price ceilings and price floors. So price controls essentially, you know, it's uh, pretty much does what it sounds like it does. So price floor and uh, price ceiling. Uh, you know what, let's talk about price floors first just so we can keep it nice and uh, condensed. So pretty much a price cannot go below a price floor. If you think in your house, you're standing, you can't really go below the floor. The floor is holding you up. So you can think price floors hold up the prices. They keep the prices above where they are. So if we're going to look at a, a normal old supply and demand graph, um, again, this can be a, for a firm or a market. Sorry, yeah, this can be for a firm or an industry or market. Um, Generally, it's you're going to be looking at it for a market, but uh, let's just draw here. We have our demand and we have our supply. Now, equilibrium. Sorry, let's get our labels. It's going to be price level. This is going to be quantity demanded of whatever good. And now, let's look at our equilibrium levels first. We have at equilibrium we have a price of let's say let's say this is at ten dollars for whatever good this is and we have a quantity of let's say a hundred okay um, and actually in the AP exam you're probably not gonna have to use a numerical values for price and quantity which is great I think so what you want to know about price floors which is incredibly confusing at first is that when they're instated, they always go above the equilibrium level. And it's drawn as this straight line right, ac right across, always above the equilibrium level. Now it's confusing because, you know, floors are at the bottom, but, you know, I, you know, floors are, you know, below you, but they're above the equilibrium level. Because basically they're saying, we don't want this price here, this equili equilibrium level. We want it above the equilibrium level. So we're going to set a price floor here so that it can never go below this level right here. And so what that does effectively is, again, if this is a binding price floor, meaning if it's an effective price floor, it will go above this equilibrium level. What that does is, if we see, this is going to be our new price right here, right here, okay, this level. This is going to be our P prime or whatever. That means where this price hits demand, we're going to drop down. And where this price hits supply, we're going to drop down. Now, these quantities, okay, so let's say this quantity is 50. And this quantity is 150. This is the quantity supplied because this is where the price hits the supply curve. This is called quantity demanded because this is where the, the price, sorry, the price hits the supply curve and where the price hits the um, demand curve. Now, if you see right here, we have quantity demanded is at 50 because this price floor is higher. Now, this is intuitive. If the price raises from this equilibrium level, at equilibrium, there was 100 of these goods demanded. But once the price raises up to this price floor, it's going to drop a little bit. The quantity demanded is going to drop to about 50, right? Because people don't want to pay the higher price. But then the quantity supplied is going to go up from 100. It's going to go to 150 because now firms want to sell more of this because they're going to make more money. So, but now we see quantity demanded is less than quantity supplied. And we know that that's called a surplus, right? Surplus. So we know that quantity supplied minus quantity demanded is equal to our surplus level. And that's pretty basic. It's not that hard. Now we're going to talk about price ceilings. Let me just get the black background back. Um, okay, now let's talk about price ceilings. It's pretty much the opposite. Ceilings. Okay, good. Now let's draw our standard supply demand plot. This is going to be price level. This is going to be quantity. Okay, now let's draw our supply. 
Command. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Now let's say our equilibrium level for this good. Let's go back with the 10 and 100 example. Say they're being sold right now in equilibrium for $10, and there's 100 demanded. Okay, very cool. Now let's say a price ceiling is instituted. Now price ceiling is only effective if it goes below. If it goes below EQ levels. So that means if the price ceiling, sorry, is going to go here or you know somewhere below. Now what does that do? Now we see, okay, well, the other example we had it up here, it created, you know, drop down here, drop down here, we had a surplus. We had the quantity demanded was much less than the quantity supplied, so we were producing too much. But now let's say if the price is just simply too high and the price needs to be lowered, prices cannot raise above a price ceiling. So they cannot bump above this. There's going to be upward pressure on this, but they cannot bump above this level okay at all so what that's going to do is if the price is reduced the quantity supplied right here this is quantity supplied is going to go down it's going to go from 100 to this let's call this 50 it's going to go down from 100 to 50 is the quantity supplied because firms don't want to sell goods at this lower price now they don't have that much incentive to sell a good but the quantity demanded this is the inverse of the other one the quantity demanded is going to go up right because now consumers are saying Wow, I'm going to demand this good more because it's cheaper. The price ceiling has set the price below $10. Let's say this is $6. The price can't raise above $6. I'm going to want to buy it more. I'm going to have more incentive to buy it if the price is below $6, which is great. But what does that have? Let's say the quantity demand is 150 If people are demanding more than there is supplied, we have something known as a shortage shortage so we have quantity demanded minus quantity supplied is equal to the shortage so we'd he see here that we have 150 minus 50 equals 100 we have a shortage of 100 units of this good and that those are price controls and I'll see you in the next video